deprogram, enlighten them. Barakatha Yahweh for this truth that I'm about to bring out through the set-apart spirit. So, I mean, with that being said, you're now under the sound of the voice of Kahan Tazada, member of what the house. Next, brothers and sisters, is actually going to this book, Sex and Race, Volume 1, by Brother J.A. Rogers. And we're going to see what he has to say about Chinese and Japanese. This book, Sex and Race, because I used it in another video and Despite me saying the name or announcing the name and its author, you still, under the video, you keep asking me, what is the name of that book? Listen to the video. Clearly, it's only um, about three minutes long. The first Italian was black. I put it out a few years ago. But the name of this book is Sex and Race. Sex and Race, Volume 1, by J.A. Rogers. I'm not trying to sell the book. I'm not trying to promote the book, but um, to those of you that want this book, it's Sex in a Race by J.A. Rogers. I know, I know that many of you have a problem with this information uh, being truthful, coming from one of the copper colored skin as myself. You want validity. Well, if you want validity, validity, then you go out and you can get your validity. But I'm giving you truth. What am I giving you? Truth. Undisputable, unrefutable truth. Hate it or love it, I'm going to give you the truth. The truth will make you mad, then make you free. Not set you free, make you free. So let's go into this book now, Sex and Race by J.A. I highly suggest that you do not take this as something that's negligible and, you know, um, and spurn it as false information. You know, although this may be spasmodic, you know, in your central processing unit known as the brain. Later, I contend that you would take this factual information back and, you know, muse over it and allow it to process against all of that deluge of falsehood that you've been taught in his story replace it with the truth replace it with the facts now who are the first chinese to all of you chinese under the sounds of my voice right now to all of you you know people that have lies that has actually you know proclaim yourself as historians well what you have provided is his story in her story. But now it's time to hear the truth. The truth. Who are the first Chinese? Now I'm going into this book. It's called Sex and Race, Volume 1, by J.A. Rogers. And he says, and I quote, The first inhabitants of China seems all too... Let me read it again and read it correctly. The first inhabitants of China seems also to have been the Negritos. The Negritos. Unmixed Negroes with no connection with Africa still live in southern China. <laughs> You know what's remarkable, uh, you know, remarkably uh, uh, astonishing about that is that, you know, many people that has, you know, considered themselves to be Chinese or the or original inhabitants of that land, they have the tendency to look down on those that refer to themselves as black or African Americans, yet. They continue to set up stores and poisonous food within our communities. So, I mean, it is hilarious, you know, um, when I learn that the first inhabitants of China were the Negritos. The Negritos. Un 
mixed Negroes with no connection to Africa, which means they originated there. They did not migrate there. They originated there. Now, I know you have not learned this in his story books, but your brother is giving it to you. And it may mix up your emotions, but it's the truth. In the earliest Chinese history, several texts in classic books spoke of these diminutive blacks. Thus, the Tukhu Li composed under the dynasty of Tukchu, 1122 to 249, gives a description of the inhabitants with black and oily skin. With black and oily skin. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, you're not even a real Chinese, buddy. You're not even a real Chinese. They're the so called black people that you make mockery of and look down upon. You make mockery of and look down upon. Now understand that these people that you see now. That was, that's referring to themselves as black That's referring to themselves as African American That's referring to themselves as Negroes Or discombobulated Because of misinformation And mind manipulation That has That they have been afflicted with But you have brothers like me Ties a dock within your midst today That's going to teach the truth Despite who may Or may not like it Understand that now, an international study has actually found that, that Chinese people originated not from the Peking men in northern China, like they taught you in China, but from earlier humans in East Africa who moved through South Asia to China some 100,000 years ago. Hong Kong's Ming Pyle daily reported, you know, that in finding that this conforms to single origin theory in anthropology. So, I mean, the truth is coming out in these last dates. So, according to newspapers, a research team led by Jin Lee of the Fundown University in Shanghai has found that, that the modern humans evolved from a single origin, not multiple origins as some experts had had you to believe so in china school te textbooks they teach that the chinese race evolved from peking man that is a lie that is a lie and it has been disproved and that is based on theory that humans in europe and asia evolved from local species a lie the lie has been exposed and you shall know the truth the truth will make you free. And if you ever wonder about my name of my YouTube page, the Deprogram Enlightener, because the first thing that I do essentially is to deprogram you from all of the falsehood that you have been taught under Reconstruction history and the history, and then give you historical facts. Replace it with historical and orthological facts, and then. Thereby, you're being enlightened. So I am the deprogram enlightener. Once I deprogrammed myself, I felt compelled to share this knowledge with those who may not know. So, you know, this newfoundland nullifies the theory that the ancestors of the Chinese people were the king men who lived in northern China 400,000 years ago. Now, based on DNA analysis of 100,000 samples that was actually gathered from around the world, a number of human families evolved in East Africa some 150,000 years ago, said Li Hui, a member of the Jin's team. Now, about 100,000 years ago, some of these humans began to leave what they referred to today as Africa with some people moving to China via South and Southeast Asia, Lee said. Now, according to the newspaper article, it has been proven that the 65 branches of Chinese races share similar DNA mutations with these people of 
East and Southeast Asia. It is said that Shanghai scientists were part of an international team comprised of researchers from Russia, India, Brazil, and other nations in a five-year project studying the geographic and genealogical routes related to the spread and settlement of modern humans. Washington, and I quote, genetic studies that show the first modern humans arrived in China about 60,000 years ago support the theory that people first evolved in Africa, researchers say. In a study published in the Proceeding of the National Academy of Scientists, scientists say that an analysis of genetic samples from throughout Asia suggests that people their spring from common ancestors, the modern humans who appeared first in Africa and then spread throughout the world. I will work sure that the modern humans first came to Southeast Asia and then moved later to northern China, said Lai Li Jin, a population genetic at the University of Texas, Houston. This supports the idea that modern humans originated in Africa. In the quote. What about the um, African presence in the ancient Far East? Well, Jen said the study is based on the analysis of the gene pattern from 43 different ethnic groups in China and Asia. He said the techniques gives an introduction of how people move and mix over thousands of generations. Migration clues are carried in genetic patterns called microsatellites that change rapidly over time. By analyzing these changes and linking them to earlier genetic patterns, researchers are able to plot the migration of the ancient humans. Based on the research, Jen said, it appears that modern humans first evolved central from Central Asia following the Indian Ocean coastline across India to Southeast Asia. Later, they moved to South China. Descendants of these original Chinese then migrated north and northwest, populating northern China, Siberia, and eventually the Americas. The Americas. This is important research because it supports the out of African theory about the origin of modern humans, said Ranjan Dika, a population genetic research at the University of Cincinnati. Dika said the results of the studies weaken an alternative theory that modern humans arose independently on different continents at about the same time. If this were true, he said, there would be little or no genetic continuity among the various populations of the world. Instead, said Dika, the findings of Jin and his colleagues show genetic continuity in China even though that the vast country has dozens of different ethnic populations and more than 200 different languages. Jin said he believes modern humans migrations into Asia was probably affected by glaciers that invaded much of the northern hemisphere during an ice age that lasted thousands of years. It may have only been after the glaciers retreated more than 15,000 years ago that modern humans were able to migrate to far northern Asia and across the Bering Strait to the Americas. Although the island nation of Japan is assumed by many to have been historically composed of essentially homogeneous population that accumulated evidence places the matter in a very vast, very vastly different light. A Japanese proverb states that for a samurai to be brave, he must have a bit of black blood. I'm going to say that again. For those Japanese that happen to not like those people that you refer to today as black. A Japanese proverb states, and I quote, For a samurai to be brave, he must have a bit of black blood. Another recording of the proverb is, Half 
the blood in one's veins must be black to make a good samurai. Hey, I'm just quoting what the proverb says. A black man, a black man became the first shogun of Japan. In China, an Afrikoid presence is visible from remote antiquity. The Shang, for example, China's first dynasty, are described as having black and oily skin. The famous Chinese sage Leo Tenz was black in complexion. In of quote. So brothers and sisters, I mean, there you have it. Taza Doc once again giving you astonishing facts um, based on historical artifacts and research and you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you mad then make you free. So tell it from the mountains. The first Chinese were black. Now let's go over here to Japan very quickly before I close this thing out. Um, what I'm now I'm going back into the book Sex and Race by J.A. Rogers, Volume 1. And I'm on page 68. We're the first Japanese Negroes. There's a very evident Negro strain in a certain element of Japanese population, particularly those of the South. Imbert says, and I quote, The Negro element in Japan is recognizable by the Negroid aspect of certain inhabitants with their dark and often blackish skin, frizzy or curly hair. The Negritos are the oldest race of the Far East. The Negritos are the oldest race of the Far East. It has been proved that they once lived in Eastern and Southern China as well as Japan where the Negritos Negritos element is recognizable still in population. End of quote. Professor Munro, one of the foremost students of Japanese life and culture, says, and I quote, The Japanese are a mixture of several distinct stocks. Negro, Mongolian, primitive of face, intolerable, with flat noses, pignotism might be traced to the Negro stock. End of quote. So, I mean, there you have it, brothers, sisters, ladies, gents. I don't want to um, go too far in this. I don't want to make the video too long. When you look at the Pacific Islanders, the same thing go for them. That's why you have features like the so-called black man and so-called black woman. Have you ever wondered why when you look at, you know, many of these statues of the ancient Buddhas, they're always, always, they always have black features, broad noses, um, black, you know, like lips, thicker lips and so on and so forth because they know the truth. The original Buddha was black, and they worshiped that image. And the original founders, as I previously stated, of the martial arts were not Japanese or Chinese, but black. The original swordsmen were black. The original people that created the system of the samurai and nujitsu was so-called black people, and it can be traced back to that. That's why when you see these statues of the Buddha, they have the ancient ones, not the recent ones. They have black features because they were so-called black people. Now, Bodhahama, that you see on the screen, he is credited with, you know, developing the martial arts system. Not the people that you see today that refer to themselves as Chinese and Japanese and you see in these Kung Fu movies. That was developed by so-called black people. I, we trace that back to what you refer to as Africa. But do some research on Boda Harmon. The, the image that you see on the screen right now. I'm giving you truth. I'm giving you truth. The original founders of the martial arts system is the so-called black man. That is a fact. Fact, fact, fact. A 
undisputable, unrefutable. So, I mean, that's that is facts, and that's what it is. Case in point, who's the greatest fighters in the UFC? You so-called blacks and Hispanics, and you so-called Brazilians, which are all, um, Yasha Allah. Cain Velasquez has dominated the heavyweights. He's dominated. Before that was Junior Dos Santos. Once they allowed you so-called blacks and Hispanics in, you dominated. It's not Asians, the ones that call themselves Asians today, that's dominating the UFC. It's you so-called blacks. And you so-called um, Hispanics. You so-called Brazilians. Yasha Allah. Look at Johnny Bones Jones. Johnny Bones Jones has dominated that light heavyweight division. And they hate him. They hate him. Why? Because he's a jake. They hate him. The youngest, uh, the, the youngest lightweight champion or the youngest UFC champion of all time, Johnny Bones Jones, don't get the credit and pu publicity that Ronnie, um, that Rousey does. But, he, you know, he, he's setting all these records. Vitor Belfort. He's been around for a very long time. And the reason that they did not want Chris Wiedemann to fight Belfort, because Belfort would have taken him out. You know why you're so good in these arts? Because you were the original creators of the martial arts system. Vitor Belfort is going to defeat Chris Wiedemann if the, the, real, the right Vitor Belfort shows up. Look at Hoist Gracie when the UFC f first started. A 170-pound man beating men almost twice his size that outweighed him by 100 pounds. And, and I'll hit you with something. Um... He wasn't even the um, best Grady, Gracie fighter. The best Gracie fighter is Hickson Gracie, who never, him, the man you see on the screen right now, that never fought in the United States. Because he, he was destined to fight in Japan. But he was, you know, the best Gracie. Retired, undefeated. Hickson Gracie. That, that was the best Gracie fighter. What is my point? My point is, you are so good at these arts. It's because you are the original creators. Not the people that call themselves today Chinese and Japanese. This is in your blood. They, they, you, this is in your ancestral blood. Anderson the Spider Silver. One of the greatest champions. The best of all time. And his laws were actually discrepancies. But I'm showing you that you are the great. It is in your blood. You are the originals of this system of martial arts. Or I should say, the system of martial Shalom, brothers and sisters. Shalom. Um, Islam. Um, peace and blessings to you all. And to the um, those that refer to themselves as Chinese and Japanese. Um, well, at least to the Chinese, I say ni hao. Um, what I'm going to bring out is going to ruffle feathers. And it's going to upset many people. Um... First question I want to ask is, who's manipulating your thinking? You know, his story has manipulated many minds in today's society. A false education system, and so on and so forth. So, the Heavenly Father has raised up men as myself to enlighten the masses of the people Replacing his story with truth, with prehistorical facts, and to demolish and destroy and demise reconstruction history that was given to you primarily by a Eurocentric society. But nevertheless, what I'm going to do in this lecture is prove beyond a shadow of a doubt that the true Asiatics, the true Asiatics, the first Chinese, the first Japanese, the first swordsman, the first martial artist, the first Buddha statue were what you refer to as black. And we, those of us that has actually been truly enlightened, do comprehend that black is a misnomer. Black is not a people. Black is essentially a color. Black is a brand. And I would also like to point out, I am not Asiatic. I am the Hebrew brother. But there are people, the original inhabitants of those lands, China, Japan, and Asia in general, or what you refer to as black. Those with the copper colored skin and Hebrew necklace. So, with that being said, I want you to open up your minds and allow yourselves to be properly educated and demolish your unfound belief system. And understand this, a belief is not real. 
A belief is something that actually has essentially been embedded into your brain and your thought process. And any time that you receive new information, even if that information is true, you actually scan that information against information that has already been embedded into your brain. And if the new information does not coincide, or if the new information conflicts with, with that to that which you have already been taught, then you reject the information, even if it is true. So I'm asking you to try to actually overwrite your past programming and mind manipulation and allow truth to enter. Now China's first dynasty and emperor was what they referred to as Afrikoid. And I want you to understand this. When I use the word African or black throughout this lecture, understand that we know that African, you know, the original name of that continent was not Africa. That is named as a European conqueror, Leo um, Africanus. So um, understand that. But we're just going to use the word African and talk in Reconstruction history so that everyone could understand what I'm talking about. But China's first dynasty and emperor was an Africoid or so-called black man in origin, founded by King Tang or Tang. The earliest documented rulership in China was the Tsang or Tiang dynasty from 1500 to 1000 BC. Now, Tsang was actually credited with unifying China's early elements to form their first civilization. You see, the Tsang was given the name Nakhai. N-A-K-H-I. Na, meaning black, and Hai, K-H-I, meaning man, black man. See, the first Chinese emperor, the legendary Fuhis, 2953 to 2838 B.C., was a woolly-haired, so-called black man. Undisputable, undefeatable. But don't believe me, go and check it out for yourself. Now, among his credits, he was credited for establishing government and originating social institutions as well as culture and inventions. Now, he is said to have been the originator of the I Ching. And I read that book in my youth, the I Ching Book of Change. It is actually among the oldest and most reverent systems of philosophy in the world today. Now, Emperor Hung Wu was founder of the great Ming Dynasty of China. He was in Sudanese, we refer to as African, and a Mongolian descent, and was also a Muslim. Understand that. Understand that. And biblically, this could be backed up. It could be backed up biblically. All you have to do is go and read the story of Lot and his two daughters. That's where Moab and Ammon came from, the Mongolian people. Understand that, understand that, and overstand that. So, you know, the skills that set forth the foundation of the Shaolin Kung Fu, you know, when I was a youth, I used to watch Kung Fu Theater, and before I came into real truth, and, you know, properly re-educated myself from miseducation in his story, you know, I thought that, hey, the Chinese and Japanese was the original creators of Kung Fu, Karate, and so on and so forth. But, that is not true. That is not true. That is a lie. The, the skills that set the foundation of Shaolin Kung Fu descends from India and Afrikoid origin. Now, even in the White Garments, Hall of the Shaolin Monastery, in Hoenan, Providence of China, all of that goes back to so-called black people. There are two 12-foot long paintings of Chinese Afrikoid, and when I say that I mean black Shaolin monks training Kung Fu boxing, skills together. Don't believe me? Go and check it out for yourself. Now, although it's not promoted, and it's hidden, because they don't want the world to know, it shows striking evidence of the deep interrelation of what they refer to as what? Africa and the martial arts and Asia. Asia. So, you are the true Asiatics. When you, when you hear the conscious community talking about the Asiatic black man, let me help him up. You are the true agent. You are the true agent. You are the, the original inhabitants of the earth. 
Everywhere you go upon this earth, you're going to find now that a so-called black man was already dead. And most of you cannot stomach that. And this is why you detest and you denounce so-called black people because you have them now in a degraded condition. But you shall honor your mothers and fathers so that your days may be longer in the land. Now let's continue on. Now amongst the earliest, let's, let's go over to Japan for a minute, Tazi Doc. Let's talk about Japan. You said, you said Japan? Let's talk about that, Tazi Doc. Let's talk about, um, you know, jujitsu and all of this. Where do these grappling techniques come from? Because you got a lot of you simple, unlearned Israelites that tell me, oh, you shouldn't do that, Tazi Doc. That's what the heat is. Yeah, shut the heck up, man. Most of you Israelites, some of you don't go beyond the Bible. You're confounded. You, you, you don't know real history. You need to learn history as well, man. I've been doing this thing for over 17 years now, man. I'm not just a kahan. I'm a historian, a scholar. And I don't need their credentials to prove such. Matter of fact, when I was in college, I always had conflict with the so-called professor. He told me that I was interrupting his class because I didn't agree with his story that he was giving me. And he asked me would I like to come to the forward of the class and teach. And when I did so, it offended him greatly when the students began to listen. So he sent me to the dean's office. Long story short, I ended up testing out of the class. I didn't need it. And he was teaching lies. I didn't want to learn those lies that I had already unlearned. And I was teaching the class to unlearn. So they forced me out of it because they don't want the truth to go forth. True life story. That's a true story. But nevertheless, let's go over to Japan. Now, among the earliest inhabitants of the Japanese continent are people called the Ainu. Ainu. A-I-N-U. They have oral traditions which actually retell of a race of people of a dark complexion that are small in stature that reside in Japan before the ones that reside there today did. Now, when we develop deeper into this, when we look deeper into this, some of uh, the historians believe that the Ainu originated in Egypt, while others have found evidence of them traveling to Egypt, making their offerings and gifts to the Egyptian pharaohs. Now, even <coughs> excuse me, even records in Mesopotamia, Mesopotamia, uh oh, uh oh, Mesopotamia. For all of you Hebrews that try to condemn Tazada for studying Muay Thai and Brazilian Jiu Jitsu and Taekwondo and Tung Soo Do, talking about following the ways of the heathens, shut up, man. You don't know history. Now, you shut up and you just might learn something. Now, I'm talking to you jets now. You just might learn something. Understand that. Understand that. I'm going to continue to practice my Muay Thai and Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Now, even records in Mesopotamia, brothers and sisters, in Egypt, records, you know, um, interactions with a people called the Ainu. Ainu. So they was involved with the Israelites. What's, tell me the Israelites wasn't in Mesopotamia. If you know history, you gotta, you, you gotta admit to that fact. You gotta consent to that. So, also, there are a number of Japanese people who, given skin complexion and hair, resembles and it had the same features as the Bushmen in South Africa. This is ancient knowledge. This is ancient knowledge of Japan being conquered in its southern region by a group of black warriors. You, they know the truth. They conceal it. But praise be to the Most High. You have Tazen Dot and other men like me within your midst today and enlighten our people with the truth and pushing his story and their story and her story to the side and bring him back historical, orthological facts. 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 So this all leads to us. This all leads us, brothers and sisters, to the fact that the first shogun of Japan himself was indeed a so-called black man. What do you refer to as black? His name, I'm going to spell his name. I'm going to spell his name so you can write it down. Because don't believe me. Go and check it out for yourself. First name. S-A-K-A-N-O-U-Y-E. Middle name. T-A-M-U. 
R A, last name M A R O. Now go and check it out for yourself. And he lived around 800 C E, the common era. The common era. So, what they refer to as African, that system of martial arts is among the oldest variety of martial arts on earth today. In fact, what they refer to as Africa, that martial arts system also, the oldest, was practiced 30,000 years ago in the Aquita civilization of the Sahara. Yeah, true. And with that, I'm going to bring this thing to an end. But, you know, one more example. Um, the brother Jose Aldo, you know, devastating. Devastating in his division. Once again, he's a jake. Showing you that we are the best martial artists because this thing started with us. We started this. This is why we do so well. You know, the Asians, they do well on Kung Fu Theater, but not in real fighting. You jakes, you need to stop looking up to Moab and Ammon and look up to yourselves. You are the greatest warriors. You are the best sports athletes. You are the best of the best in whatever you do when you devote yourselves to it. And again, you've been under the sounds of the voice of Kahan Tazadak of Yahweh's camp. And I'm going to say Shalom, Yasha Allah. Share this video and pass it on because it is truth.